Icy conditions and bitter cold also play an important part in our next story, but this time the victim is a child, a three-year-old boy with a very special angel on his shoulder. January 27, 2000 was a hectic day for Highway Patrol Trooper Tim Tarleton. With temperatures dipping below freezing and icy road conditions, he had seen more than his usual share of accidents. That morning was particularly busy. I came out to work at 6 a.m. Uh, and by 2 p.m. I hadn't stopped. It had just been one wreck after another. When I came home for lunch that day, I'd planned on taking the rest of the day off because I really had nothing that I knew of to go back to the office for. But Tim couldn't ignore a nagging feeling. And for some reason, I just felt like I needed to run back up to the office just to check and see if anything else had come in, anything else was waiting on me. So I left home for that reason, just to go and check Just as I sat down in the car, I heard the sheriff's office give a call. We have a report of a small child who wandered away from his home. He's been missing for approximately one hour. The address is 2238 Clear Lake Road. I rarely take a call directly from the sheriff's department, but the location the sheriff's office gave was only a mile or so from my location. <laughs> Officer Tarleton was the first to arrive at the scene and was met by Mary Dyer, the young boy's distraught mother. My real son, oh my gosh. I... When I spoke with Mary, she was very upset and she was very emotional. He was just playing on the porch. I was watching She explained how she had last seen her three-year-old son, Sammy, an hour earlier, playing with their dogs on the back porch. I had a baby gate up on the steps for the porch so he couldn't wander off. I was doing the dishes, and I saw him cross over the window. Sam? Sam? And I went on the porch to tell him to come back. Sam? But he wasn't out there. I thought, well, he just wandered out behind the home, and I'll just check out back. Looked in the back, didn't hear him, didn't see him. Samuel Tyler! I was horrified. It was the scariest thing I've ever been through. Oh, Shauna, Matt, have you seen As she became more anxious, Mary enlisted the help of some neighbors. Sam! I took off into the woods because I just had this feeling to go up towards the left and I called up there and walked around for about 30 minutes. Samuel! But after finding no sign of her son, Mary turned to the Alexander County Sheriff's Department for help. Because of the freezing weather, time was of the essence for the rescue team, led by Deputy Sheriff Hayden Bentley. It was very cold that day. The wind was blowing, snow on the ground, and that was the major concern at that time for the child. Depending on how they're dressed, uh, a three-year-old uh, would not last long without, I believe, uh, receiving major injuries from the cold. The sheriff's team immediately brought in a trained bloodhound. Anytime that we have an area that we're gonna use a bloodhound in, what we try to do is cordon off the area and make sure that nobody goes in until the dog handler gets there. Well, the bloodhound is taken to where the person that you're looking for was last seen. And then the bloodhound will distinguish between the scents. As long as you don't contaminate the area too much with different scents. With the search well underway, Officer Tarleton decided to return to headquarters. Our office is located on Highway 90. 
and 99 times out of 100, so I take Highway 90. This time, I elected to take Highway 64. The two highways run parallel. It you know, could just as easily have taken one as the other. I had driven what I thought was about a mile, and off on the shoulder, I spotted a van that had pulled over, and I pulled in behind it to see what the problem was. Hello. She had thought she had run out of gas. Actually, her van was equipped with dual tanks, and it was just a matter of flipping a switch. That whole process might have taken less than a minute. And then, as he was walking back to his patrol car, something caught his eye. Just as I turned around, these dogs ran out of the woods stayed on the shoulder of the road for just a few seconds. Then they turned and ran back into the woods. And I remember that the boy was on the back porch playing with his dogs. I just took off running behind the dogs, trying to catch up with them. I remember thinking, as I ran through the woods, it was just a one in a million chance that this is gonna work out. I followed the dogs for maybe 200 yards into the woods. And sure enough, I started hearing a voice, a small child screaming. And as I got closer, I could see clearly a small child standing in snow that was waist deep. And he was hopelessly stuck in the snow. And the first thing that went through my mind was I absolutely could not believe that the dogs had run straight to him. Uh, and when I pulled him out of the snow, the elation went just like that, and I was scared. I was really scared because he was scratched, he was cut up. But he was most concerned about the boy's prolonged exposure to the freezing cold. I was thinking, uh, you know, this boy's gonna lose some toes, he's gonna lose some fingers, he may lose a leg from the hypothermia. Once I had uh, brushed the snow off of his clothes and got down and saw that what I thought was a pair of shoes that were snow covered were a pair of socks that were snow covered, uh, that just elevated my concern. Officer Tarleton raced back to the Dyer home with little Sammy. Sammy was out of the woods, but he was not yet out of danger. Tommy, he was stuck in snow up to about right here, and he's got no shoes on. Sammy! I don't know how long he's been with Let me hold my shoes. baby. Let me hold him. I was very alarmed when I first saw him. Mary, just give him a chance. They'll take care of him. He was all sick and shaking, and his toes and fingers were already blue, so I knew that he was hurt. He could have died. <laughs> I don't want to say it, you know, I don't want to say it, but yeah, he could have died. I remember at that point I had mixed emotions. I remember, uh, you know, feeling good that Sammy was back home, but I was still convinced that Sammy was going to have, you know, permanent, uh, permanent injuries from this. Uh, worst case scenario, maybe an amputation. Sammy was rushed to the hospital where, to everyone's surprise, he showed no signs of frostbite. In more than 22 years on this job, I've never seen or, or known of or been involved with a incident that had uh, so many different uh, factors that all came together uh, with almost split-second timing. From the feeling that I had leaving my home that I just needed to go back to the office, to the getting into my patrol car and hearing a call the second I got in. Another minute later checking in and I wouldn't have heard the call. That little slim 60 second window where I happened to pull in behind the van. And most of all to the exact second that I turned and started back to my patrol car the dogs ran out of the woods, got my attention, 
and ran back into the woods. I strongly believe that there was uh, something uh, watching over Sammy. Many people uh, refer to it as a guardian angel. I don't think that it's explainable any other way. Little Sammy is also thankful for the miracles that saved him that cold day. My guy in the state troops car was shaking like this very, very much. My butt was cold, my hands was cold, my, my, the, my, my foot was cold, everything was going on, even in my head. I believe there was something out there that helped him that day. It wasn't coincidence. God is out there, no matter what anyone says. Sammy Dyer is one lucky little fellow. He's also quite a character for his age, and we thought it would be fun to talk with him a little bit more about his experience. So he and his mother join us now from their home in Connolly Springs, North Carolina. Hello there, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Richard. First of all, Mom, are you at all worried that little Sammy's going to wander off into the woods again? No, I don't worry because he learned his lesson that if he wanders off too far, he knows I'm not going to be there to watch out for him. <laughs> okay, Sammy, I guess that means you agree. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you think you had a guardian angel watching over you that day? Yep, they all watch you over you all night and all day. Hmm. Does everybody have a guardian angel or only you? Everybody does. I think so too. But I still want you to promise me something. You stay out of those woods, okay? Okay. I'm not going there again. <laughs> Good idea. And thank you for joining us. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Bye.